Cognitive load is probably the most powerful variable in all of design. If you understand how to control cognitive load, how to make something you create feel easy or feel hard, then the presentation slides and reports and posters you design are going to be much more engaging and they're going to transfer much more insight. A few minutes from now, you're going to learn to see cognitive load everywhere and you're going to learn how to see when someone else can't see it. You ready? Let's learn cognitive load. Okay, I'm gonna show you two pictures and I want you to tell me which one feels easier to process. You ready? On the left, we have a TikTok video of Darth Vader being ticketed by an Imperial officer for breathing too loudly. And on the right, we have a scientific journal article. Darth Vader video feels easier, right? And the scientific journal article feels heavier. It just feels like there's a lot to process. It's that feeling of your brain just like filling up really quickly when you look at it. That feeling is cognitive load. Let's do another one. So on the left, we have a traditional wall of text scientific poster. And on the right, we have a poster by a science museum. The poster on the right just feels lighter and easier to process, right? But of course the poster on the right feels easier. There's less stuff on it. It doesn't have the important rigor and nuance of the real scientific poster. We just dumbed it down. And a lot of people think that's all cognitive load is. It's just dumbing down things. But there's much more to it than that. What about this one? Which one feels easier? The one on the right with the big text and the extra spacing, right? But the article on the right isn't dumbed down. It has a lower cognitive load, obviously you can feel the difference, but it has the exact same scientific content. A funny video will always have a lower cognitive load than a scientific article because the scientific article is talking about something intrinsically more difficult to understand. In this example of the redesigned scientific article, it has a bigger font, it has more space around the text so it's easier for you to read it, but the content is the same. I didn't lower the intrinsic cognitive load of this article at all. It's still the exact same intrinsic difficulty because it's the same content. Like the tiny font and all like the visual clutter and the cramped layout, that's not necessary cognitive load. That's not anything to do with this topic being difficult. That's cognitive load that's coming from the design. That's unnecessary cognitive load. So the way you reduce cognitive load isn't to ask yourself, how can I dumb this down? What you're really asking is what's unnecessary? What is contributing unnecessary cognitive load to this design that I can reduce without really affecting the intrinsic content at all? The other thing I changed about this scientific article, if you noticed, was I removed some of that sort of extra information like the volume number of the journal and like the fourth author's affiliation and all of that stuff. Obviously, we need that to appear somewhere in the paper. But most of you would probably agree that the fourth author's affiliation is less important for understanding this study than like the methods paragraph, for example. So it's not really saying we're gonna remove everything that's important. What you wanna do is remove or severely deprioritize what's less important than what you leave. This technique of deprioritizing less important information so that the more important information can shine is called weeding in cognitive load research. And I'll show you another example. If you look at this traditional wall of text scientific poster, the most important bits of the poster are probably like these key figures, the methods, maybe a couple of the conclusions. Now, which pieces of information are much less important? If we eliminate the information that's less important than these areas, like maybe the contact information that you can give them in person, the references that nobody's gonna read, the parts of the hypothesis that are redundant and say the same thing as the conclusions in the abstract, we can remove those. Then what you can do with the remaining space is make those important elements much bigger, much easier to process. By doing this, you're making it more likely that someone will see your sample size, your study methods. I want to add a final note here on weeding out less important information. This is physically painful sometimes, and it feels insane. But when in doubt, cut it. Another research-backed technique for reducing the cognitive load of your posters and presentations and reports and things is something called pre-training. The idea of pre-training is that you teach people a little bit about what they're about to learn first so it's easy to grasp, and then you teach them the harder, more complex side of that subject. So back to our scientific journal paper example, what if before you read that paper I showed you this? These are photos from within the article of colored syringe trays versus plain syringe trays, and the main takeaway that color-coded syringe trays made it easier to detect a misplaced syringe under high cognitive load, but a small sample. Now, after looking at this, I bet you feel a lot more prepared to read this article and kind of critically evaluate it because you know what they're going for. 
this is also the whole idea of making your main takeaway and your key figure central on a better poster. You're not dumbing it down, you're teaching people the core part of your study in a way that they can understand easily first to prepare them to stop and understand the more complex aspects. That's what pre-training is. So final thought, if you look at these two scientific journal articles, obviously the one on the right feels lower in cognitive load, now we know it's probably easier to learn from, but which one feels more rigorous? The one on the left, the tight condensed one. Which one feels more like science? The one on the left. This same effect applies to posters too. Which poster feels more rigorous, more scientific? The wall of text does, right? Which one did you actually learn something from in the last 10 seconds? The one on the right. That dense, high cognitive load feeling is what we think science is supposed to feel like, even if it's coming from stupid unnecessary variables like the font size being too small. We confuse bad design for good science. It's like that quote from the famous designer Paul Rand. He said the public is more familiar with bad design than good design. It is, in effect, conditioned to prefer bad design because that's what it lives with. The new becomes threatening, the old reassuring. Just because something feels complex doesn't mean it's rigorous science. It could just be small font size. And just because something feels easy to process doesn't mean it's not rigorous. It could just be good science and good design. 